Hey, Homeworthy. I'm Danielle. And I'm Curtis. And this is our Chicago apartment. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hey everybody, I'm Curtis Taylor Jr. And I'm Danielle Taylor. And we are here in our home in Chicago, Illinois. It's roughly around 700 square feet. So, you know, it's considered. <laughs> um, and it's, it's our little corner and oasis in the city. Uh, when we got this apartment in 2020, yep. um, it really was more Danielle's style. I was more of like the modern, sleek, bachelor pad type of home with a pop of color yeah zero. always with color <laughs> uh but when we found this home it just had really good bones and like really good character mm -hmm. yeah i mean the built-in shelves were the first thing that i noticed yeah the molding we liked the molding some of the traditional archways yes. and stuff in the home and the building just like it kind of felt a little reminiscent of like hogwarts yeah, it's definitely a, like an older pre-war building. So we um, are subject to things like no central air or heat. Um, and we have these gorgeous radiators, but I mean, it just adds to the character. How did we meet? That's always a great question. And I like to tell my version because I think it's better. Um, so we met on the college campus at the University of Missouri. And I was a freshman, Curtis was a a graduate student, a senior, a senior in, at the University of Missouri, and we kind of just met each other in passing, but we didn't make things official until September of 2015, where we went on our first date at an ice cream parlor on campus. Um, so from there, we had a long distance relationship after Curtis graduated and started his directing career in LA, and I came back to Chicago and started my consulting career. Um, and then from there, we kind of did the long distance thing for a while. And then we moved here in 2020. Um, and then the pandemic happened. The pandemic, yeah. So he moved here because of the pandemic. Yes, so uh, <laughs> my version is, I'll pick up from the pandemic part, is that I came and I never left. And now we're the Taylors. We're married. <laughs> so, you know, it worked out for us. Yeah. <laughs> we are currently here in our entryway. Um, we also like to call this our study. It's our study in transition um, as we prepare for our larger forever home. Um, babe, what's some of the details you want to talk about in this space that makes us love the study? So one of my favorite things in our study or entryway is actually our front door. So when we first moved in, it was a blank slate, completely white with no embellishments. And we really wanted this space to feel like um, grand and um, I think just more considered. So what we did is we actually painted the foundation of the door and also added um, wainscoting. So this was a few trips to Home Depot, um, but after a trip or two, we were able to kind of get the design down right. Um, we added what is usually used as molding for walls, um, crown molding, and we added that as our wainscoting. We wanted it to feel like chunky and thick um, and also have two layers so it mirrored some of the designs of the doors that already existed in our, in our home. 
And then we also added like this little fox from Anthropology. Um, usually the peephole I think is on the other side of the door. I'm not sure, but we just knew that the outside of a lot of doors that we see in the Chicago area and like historic buildings have such grand doors. And because we live in an apartment, we wanted that to feel like that on the inside of our home. So we also added a kick plate at the bottom um, because the gold interacts with the gold of our fox and the actual door handle and our uh, lock here. Also, because like we said, we want to call it a study, um, which means we need study material. So we added these really nice floating bookshelves that we saw from one of our friends um, on TikTok or Instagram. And they were just like ones that everybody was talking about on TikTok. So we got these um, to be able to house some of our books and some of the literature that we have. But we thought it was really important that like in the future, we just want to really keep building and curating this really incredible library. Um, so why not start now? So yeah, we have bell hooks. You know, you got to have some bell hooks. We got some Toni Morrison in there. Um, Children of Blood and Bone. We got some fiction. Y'all know I love fiction. Um, so yeah, and these are actually going to end up getting put in a shadow box, but these are actually our vow books from our wedding. So these ones covered in a moss are like extra, extra special. Um, but yeah, and like Danielle said, in the continuation of the fox, we have like all of these other like whimsical animal characters throughout the home that you'll find. So we have this horse uh, door stopper um, that we're using as like a weight. So yeah, this is this. Um, and then also in this space as well, traditionally when you're renting, you don't always see like these type of closet doors painted. But we painted them to match the space and to make it feel really, really warm. Um, and we also added these knobs because everything is renter friendly. These gold embellishment knobs are actually peel and stick, believe it or not. So it's really easy, but they're sturdy. So they still work. Um, and then up here, we added shiplap um, to the top exterior to mirror on both sides. And then also, we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Yeah. Um, but the ceiling... The ceiling panels we also added, which are actually made out of styrofoam from Amazon, and then we painted them. That Yale found them. <laughs> Incredible renter-friendly hack. Um, but these were drop ceiling tiles. So, you know, drop ceiling tiles get a little. But these now, it just made it feel so much more um, exquisite. Um, and it really brought the character and the bones of the home that were already here. Um, and then we added this light cover as well, which was also from Amazon, um, that we love. And then the last thing in this space, um, is this rug right here, which is actually made by our friend, Sean Brown. Um, it's a outcast rug for any of those outcast fans there. This is the love below. So if you know that album, you know, it's an incredible masterpiece. And so, you know, we had to add a little bit of culture into the study. My fascination and career is like as a kid growing up in the Midwest, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I always had a really vivid imagination. I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do with that or how that was going to transpire into like making money. Um, but I just knew that there was something fascinating to me about fiction and magic and the ability for things to just come out of nowhere and so growing up as a kid I loved Harry Potter um, and anything adjacent that was like dystopian um, and I always just was gravitating towards like design and things that were very interesting um, because in the Midwest we don't have access to a lot of those things readily like mm -hmm. the coast do yeah. um, and so eventually that all sort of boiled down into like me hitting my head against the wall on a few things and ultimately landing in like writing and directing and that finally feeling like a soft place for like my ideas um, and my sort of like personhood to like come to life. Um, and I feel like it matches, it really matches my personality in the end. Um, and then, you know, all within that, there's a sprinkle of design. Directing is like designing the whole thing from beginning to end. So yeah. Babe, what about you? Well, how do I follow that, Mr. Writer-Director? Um, <laughs> but my career, tell me about my experience. How did I start? So 
Honestly, I always loved beauty. Um, I grew up watching YouTube videos and all of the greats that are now working with a lot of the incredible brands that we love and shop in Sephora today. And I didn't know how to make that a career. And I also didn't know how it impacted the planet. Um, all of the cosmetic products, the single use um, ingredients and materials that we use in order to enjoy those things. So I started my career in consulting where I learned really how to run a business. And then from there, I co-founded a company that focuses on sustainability and beauty. And then I realized that there was so much more to, to sustainability than just the actual um, beauty products themselves. It's the packaging, it's the material and the inputs. So I've started to explore the duality of sustainability and culture. Um, and what it looks like to build a world that will last for a lifetime and beyond. Um, and when it comes to design, I'd say that I'm very connected to my surroundings. And sometimes it's hard for me to express myself and like design something that I think shows what I have on the inside. <laughs> so Curtis will do that. He'll like take pictures of things that I like. He'll be like, I really think you're gonna like this. And sometimes I don't know if I like it, like the uh, tomato colored arch that we have. Um, <laughs> but once it's done, I'm like, okay, I like it. So I get a little bit of push. She has to see it to believe it. I folks. do have to see it to believe it. But that's um, okay. I got like a 99% shooting average. I, so. Pretty much. I mean, 99%, 99.9% like percent yeah. shooting average. So It typically works out. It works out. And we have a few entrepreneurial endeavors that have happened Absolutely. in between. So we are very used to startup and entrepreneurship. Yes. Yeah. Which is why our space is even more important to us because the pandemic is where we really started working from our home, but we also um, work here together today. So even post pandemic, we still work from home and we support our clients from here. So, um, you know, if I'm in the bedroom or Curtis is at the desk or at the front table, like we're literally everywhere just working. <laughs> yeah. I think something I would add to that too that is really important is that during the pandemic, although it's like a time that's really like heavy and something that we were all globally experiencing together, um, it was the moment that we realized that a lot of times as renters, you know, growing up, you're kind of told that you don't want to invest a lot into your space because oh, yeah. you're renting it oh, and yeah. you don't own it. Um, and because we were here in the pandemic and we were just sitting around looking at each other in like <laughs> 700 square feet um, for almost three years, right? Yeah, long time. Like we started to understand the gravity um, in curating a space that inspired you to be you, but also mm -hmm. to see the optimism in the world. Um, oftentimes when it feels so dark and, and heavy. Um, and this was our little slice of like how to show possibility. Um, and like Danielle said, um, we always say if we write a book, um, the book will be, if you wanna find love, build a home together. <laughs> um, and that's what we did. All right guys, so we are now coming into our living room, which is one of our favorite places in the home. It's kind of like the living room slash dining room slash office area <laughs> space, but we'll get into that. But before we get into that, we have a very special piece behind us this way. Okay, so when we first started our art collection, we really didn't know that much about collecting at all, but our collection started because we got incredible gifts from friends who actually were the reason that our art collection started. and. This is another piece that's a part of that story. This is a piece by a Chicago-based contemporary artist by the name of Nico Washington, who is actually one of our favorite contemporary artists right now. We have this piece and we have another Nico Washington. But this piece is really special because our friend Adrian Octavius Walker, another artist, gifted it to us as a wedding gift. Yeah. So this is the first thing that we got even before we got married. And it looks like us, but it's actually not us. All right, so now we've told you about our Nico Washington. Um, and now we got another really, really special part in here that's a new addition. Nobody's really ever seen this, but you guys, come take a look. Okay, so in this area, guys, uh, 
We have this incredible, incredible wallpaper, which was actually a recent collaboration that we had with Auto Studio. Um, and this is a um, wallpaper that's called uh, There Was a Country. Um, and it's by an artist by the name of Uzo. And it is just so beautiful. And it reminds us of like family reunion. When we had this space, we knew we wanted a statement wall but we didn't quite know what it was gonna be. And we went back and forth about colors for a really long time. If you guys haven't noticed by now, green is our favorite color. So green is a constant theme in the house. Um, and green is good for prosperity. So when we see this wallpaper, it just makes us so happy. And there are little anecdotes throughout. And in these thought bubbles, you'll see like soft life, uh, movement of the people. Like it just felt very very like us and what we love about Uzo's work is that she actually merges like contemporary black life and like African diaspora across spectrum to like this really really special place that makes it modern um, and it makes it feel like a shared experience between like all of us being black Americans um, so this is like one of our like proudest moments and me and Dayo's little brother Michael actually put this up ourselves um, it was a little bit of a task, but because we do everything renter friendly, it's also removable. So if you guys are looking for some great removable wallpaper, Auto Studios, there was a country. <laughs> and I surprised Danielle with it when she was gone for a work trip. Were you surprised? I was. I literally home? walked in and was like, what? Weren't we doing this together? What? This looks beautiful. So yeah. Yeah. And this is like our little work from home nook. And now Danielle has like the best work from home. Background. Background. Zoom certified. Yeah. We surveyed it. <laughs> My absolute favorite piece in our home is actually this desk. In the whole home? In the whole home. Guys. <laughs> okay. In the whole home. Okay. Tell us about it. That's because Curtis is always like, Danielle, like, I think that we could take the desk out. We could swap in. I'm always fighting for the desk. But when our home was completely empty, before we even got another beautiful piece, like our dining room table we'll talk about later, this piece was here. And this was during the pandemic, we purchased it and I had nowhere to work, surfaces were very limited and I needed somewhere to set up my laptop and work. So um, when we got the desk, it was amazing. It's kind of slender um, and not something that's super big. So we do sometimes, we've had it here, it's been on the other side of our apartment, um, in the living room on the other side of the room. And it kind of serves as multiple purposes. We will turn it into a bar when we're hosting. Um, we'll use it as just like a way to display our books or a course in order to actually work. So it's definitely one of my favorite pieces. And I think it's just the details in the burl wood that makes it feel extra special. So what's on top of our desk is probably almost just as important as what's on with the actual desk. <laughs> Um, but this is an extension of our library. So throughout our entire living room, you'll see that we have a lot of books that are focused on things from photography, inspiration, floral design. Um, some of our favorites include A24, um, absolutely the new Black Vanguard, and then just vases or vessels that we use to fill with floral. Um, and then we usually almost always have a candle here um, in order to just like make it feel moody and uh, kind of warm and cozy because this is more of a nook area of our apartment. Um, so yeah. And I think that what's also really important for us, so coffee table books are really important to our story because they were some of the first things we could afford mm -hmm. when we got into the space and we were like, oh, we want to start like designing and like, what does that look like? And we can't buy a $2,000 table. But, you know, coffee table books are one of those things that are extremely accessible um, and that people can get from either their local bookstore. We like to buy local when we can. Yeah. Um, or, you know, to support artists when their monograms come out. Um, some of the ones that are new as well that I really love is like this Young, Gifted, and Black. Also, uh, I Can Make You Feel Good by Tyler Mitchell, if you guys don't know. Feeling Seen by Campbell Addy. Nadine, anything by Nadine, our own selves. We love Nadine in this household. Um, so yeah, like our coffee table books are like a warm hug and we always encourage people who come over like, yes, although it looks museum like, please grab it, crack it open, read it, stay a while. <laughs> That's what the candle's here for. Um, 
So we have that, and then before we move on, over here in this corner, oh. this right here is our lucky Mr. Fish. <laughs> uh, as we said, we have a lot of like whimsical character moments. So I actually found this at the Lincoln um, Antique Mall here in town, which is a very historical antique um, store. And when I saw it, I just knew I had to have it. And I remember FaceTiming Danielle, and I'm like, oh my God, I found this little bitty side table, and it's a fish. And she was just like, okay. And I showed it to her, and she's like, I love it. And it's just like the perfect Peter Pan-esque whimsical moment to like tie in the home. On top of it as well, um, by the way, we have Black Archives, which is also by another friend of ours, uh, Renata Shirley's, who I also got the opportunity to interview uh, before for a story that I was writing. And this is their first book that came out for Black Archives. So we love this. This is new. Um, and then this piece right here was done by our friend Ken Basie, um, who we also love, which is 101 Black Women to Read Before You Die. And so it has all these little pictorial stories of like black women throughout history who've written books that we just love. You got Bell Hooks, Maya Angelou, Toni Morrison, Audre Lorde, Alice Walker, and the list goes on and on. But it's just such a charming piece. And like, it feels like something that will go in like our future kids room. Yeah, like definitely. Nursery. I mean, with the crayons and like the raisins, absolutely. And I think it's just inspiring for little women. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice, it's nice. Okay, let's show you the rest of the living room. How we've decorated the space is it's been a natural evolution and progression. Um, hence the white couch. The white couch I like to use as a benchmark because it's kind of where we started. Um, it's also where Danielle's style and my style started to converge. I would say when we first approached our home and styling, um, we definitely were going more neutral. Yeah. Um, what was like trendy, what a lot of people were doing. Like mid-century modern. Yeah, like, yeah. but it was still very like blank slate. It felt like a showroom. Yeah. Um, and then as we went into the process more, we just wanted something that felt like lived in and something that felt sourced and nuanced. And as Danielle said before, I'm a color guy, if you can't tell by my Willy Wonka inspired frames. <laughs> um, so like from there, we just merged the balance of like color and neutrality. Um, and we landed on like maximalism. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things you'll see throughout the space, little like caricatures, things from our trips or travels abroad that you'll see. Um, and all of our designs are meant to be renter friendly because we are renting our apartment here. So we want it to feel like forever, meaning like we design for where we are, but also we can remove it so our landlord doesn't make us pay the price. Yeah, that's important folks. <laughs> All right, now we're going to show you the rest of the living room. Ta-da! We were already here, but this is the other side. The <laughs> other side of the magic. I'd love to tell you guys about our sofa. Um, this is our six-penny sofa, and it's white. So it's definitely a conversation piece and the most clean thing um, in our entire home. Everything else is printed, colored, bold, and this is the one thing that's actually just all white. Um, so the sofa is from Six Penny, as I mentioned, and the actual top pillows, like these two in the corner, are from Restoration Hardware with Etsy slip covers. Um, we wanted a sofa that felt deep and cozy, that felt like it was inviting, um, but we didn't realize the color would kind of deter our guests from sitting here. So um, we always have to tell them, like, please come sit. Um, but the actual piping uh, along the edges is one of the details that stood out the most to us. And the fact that we can actually swap the cover for any other colors that Six Penny actually offers. So if we want to do a dark orange or a burgundy or a blue, we can swap it out and it's easy to clean. So we just take it off and take it to the dry cleaners and bring it back um, whenever we feel like we need to. So definitely one of my favorites, super cozy and I love her. <laughs> yeah. I think the other thing in here too, like in this room, is obviously this is the most 
focal point of the space when you first come in this is what you're greeted with uh, visually we wanted to have um, artwork here that really just started a conversation um, obviously when our collection started like we talked about earlier it started from gifting um, so these top pieces here are from our friend Shayna McCoy um, which we like to call the twins um, they're untitled but Shayna gifted us these patches and we went and got them framed here locally at Frame Chicago um, and we just thought they felt like preschool but also again we we do a lot of elements that are like yo this would be tight in a future kids room um so we say that a lot but i think that that's important because we want our children to be raised around art and for it not to be something that isn't always been a part of who they are um and then this is also a shana mccoy piece this is original one of one just for us um and we call this one baby girl yeah um, she's so cute. She's so petite. Uh, we also plan on getting her framed, but she's on this really beautiful gray uh, velvet texture. Um, this one in the corner is Loose Ties um, by our brother and friend, Adrian Octavius Walker. I actually curated this exhibition um, in two spaces. Actually, three. I've helped him do this in three spaces now. In Oakland, Columbia, Missouri, and here locally in Chicago. Um, so this is our art wall. We got Ame Leon door and then this piece right here is a piece by Another one of our friends Sean Brown. This was shot in Miami um, And we just love it. It reminds us of like black love and just what it feels like to still feel like young right below our art wall this is um, I would say it's kind of like we use it for storage, but originally it's actually a dresser from CB2. Um, and we actually got it from the outlet. So if you're looking for a sustainable way to shop or even ways to kind of get some really good discounts, we like to shop at the outlet stores. And it'll come with like a little bit of wear and tear, but nothing that you can't fix at home. Um, and it's just beautiful. So it has a leather front, dark wood um, throughout. And then we also topped it with these two twin lamps here that we found that are just stunning. I'll let Curtis tell you more about those. Um, and then along the top of this surface, as I mentioned, surfaces are so important to us. We go through and we style this for the season. So it might be Christmas, which is coming up, Curtis' favorite, ho favorite holiday. We'll deck it out with snow, um, add a few different reindeer, and then it feels like it's just a whole new environment. Um, and then also you'll notice some like antique pieces um, some of our favorite bookends from Hay, um, and then also another Sean Brown piece. So this is um, Sean Brown's like mirrored coffee like coasters, and they're mirrors. I won't show you the camera, but they're mirrored and it has curves on them. So super cute. They look like spills, like little water spills. These lamps are from Jocelyn Maine. So we wanted it to feel really symmetrical in order to bring the eye in around the artwork. Um, and then the last thing that I would say is these two African statues over there are also like heirlooms from Danielle's family. Um, when their family was moving out of their childhood home, we asked to keep those um, from her parents. And just a way to kind of keep her family and her lineage a part of our home as it's ever growing um, is really important to us. So we like to give homage to them and they, they make their own little appearance. All right, so lighting is really important to us. We have lamps everywhere, but there's no central light in here. So when you look at this little guy here, it looks like a mushroom, but it's actually a lamp. So it's a lamp from Hay. If you um, tap on the bottom, it'll actually light up. I, it has to be charged. That's like one of the downsides of, of like all of our rechargeable, re, uh, renter friendly things is you have to charge them. But um, this is a little lamp. It's so cute and like it just feels kind of fun. Um, and I don't know, I think like this adds a pop of color to our space and probably inspired the red arch that we have. So how I would describe our personal style in our home is in the process of us trying to like figure out what category because when we were looking for inspiration for things, we were like, well, what is our style? Like, it's kind of not really mid-century. It's kind of not like just all Is it antique. Scandinavian? Is it Scandinavian? Are we modern? And then when we finally landed and found like maximalism, we were like, okay, this feels like us. Probably not as eclectic as like maximalism could go. Even though people say that. They say we're eclectic. But... <laughs> I think what we also found is the importance of like having a desire to like preserve 
art and to mm -hmm. move into the spaces like collectors and what does it look like for your home to be a space that holds things that preserves history and like story and like narrative and folklore um and so for us i think that maximalism a lot of times doesn't feel like it invites like the black experience into that lens um and so we want to be an example of that of mm -hmm. like what does your home look like that is lived in that feels like relics of your life collected um that's not like hoarding but you know is well placed and everything has a story mm -hmm. and a narrative and how that pairs with the art collection that we're building um so i think that that's how i would kind of describe would you add anything babe? um i would emphasize culture um when i think about our definition of design um, being a, a black couple, we already have our own sense of culture that comes with our race and our ethnicity and the history of our of who we are. Mm -hmm. um, but we also really do focus on like what that culture looks like today, m modern day. And I think like when we can both think about our grandmother's homes, we see a lot of uh, similarities in um, I would say like the beauty and the details of small items. So we really like smalls. And you were talking about this when we went to the store the other day. Can mm -hmm. you talk about what smalls mean? Yeah, so smalls are like those knickknacks that you would probably always see that your aunt or your grandma would have. Um, but now we've come up with a very contemporary term. These are what the girls are saying on TikTok. Um, they're, they're calling it smalls nowadays, fellas. So, for example, like this could be considered a small. It's a beautiful textured branch nest situation where it can inset a candle or your keys or just like random things but we love stuff like this so yeah these are our smalls so now let's go into our dining room or our like dining area depending on like who it is that's like talking about it but we like to say our dining room room so this art piece is done by a contemporary artist in st louis where my hometown is um, his name is von davis and this piece is called tangible um, it's really really beautiful to us because for the longest time we were saying like we want a textile in the home yeah but what is it going to look like what is it going to be and then we found this painting so von considers his pieces paintings um and it's like this really beautiful like ballet between like life of being like distressed but also still really beautiful even through everything that life puts you through so we love tangible she's that girl Avon loaned it to us he was so kind to do that so yeah we love this and babe what about the wall all right so this was probably one of the first areas we took seriously when painting um and we um added portola paint so we have it in a few different places but here is definitely where you see it the most it's the most pronounced um, and the color is nitty gritty so portola paint actually feels like clay and this actual paint is roman clay so sometimes you'll see this texture created using lime wash or roman clay and for us we use roman clay that will like scrape along the walls in order to get this like distressed almost velvety texture and it feels be feels beautiful and looks amazing. And then we layered on more wainscoting here and a little bit of a thinner pattern with two skinny ones on the side and um, a wider one in the center. And I don't know if I mentioned this when we were in our actual study, but our wainscoting is removable, 100% removable. And we've actually adhered it using double-sided tape. So I think we picked it up from Home Depot and found an amazing video on TikTok or Instagram that showed us how to do this. So we get the look without paying the price. Um, and also on this wall, we have our removable sconces that we picked up from Amazon. So um, you'll see a lot of Amazon finds here, but honestly, it's just a wonderful marketplace to find things that will arrive quickly um, and also are just kind of viral at the moment and you can make your own. So these sconces are not actually hardwired. Um, we cut the wire and adhered them using just the screws on the side. But the actual light source, similar to the other areas in our home, are puck lights. So battery operated puck lights that we can use with we can turn on with remotes. And when we're trying to set the mood, we turn the lights down, our main light down, and then we add 
um, our puck light. So we get a little bit of a different vibe depending on the time of day. And outside of that, again, back to small source things that just feel like very special. Um, to this centerpiece, these are two of our favorite things that we've gotten from a local store here, which is our absolute favorite. And it's like our secret that we're going to share with you guys. It's called Jason Home. They also have online shopping, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, we got this beautiful wood stand. When we saw it, we just knew we had to have it. We didn't quite know what it was going to be for, but we knew that it was going to be for us. So we really like this because it feels organic and it feels like sort of ornate to be able to make this table feel more grand. And we've paired it also from Jason Home yeah. <laughs> um, with these two shells. It sort of mirrored like the organic nature of what they would look like and they were actually in the ocean. And we use them to actually like hold as vessels um, for fresh fruit and veggies and things like that um, on this rounded table. So this table functions as our dining room table. And usually when we eat, I know what you guys are thinking, where do you actually eat at? Yeah. We take them off. So <laughs> this is like to make it look all special and pretty. So okay. probably like 80% of the time it looks like this and the other 20% we're eating on it. Um, so yeah, we love this. Um, and the chair that's right here was a steel. Yeah. I think this beautiful chair that we got from Crate and Barrel Outlet, um, maybe for like $70. Yeah, it was really low. It was a steal. It's sturdy, very, very heavy, and has this beautiful upholstery. Yeah, we couldn't say no. So yeah, this is our beautiful dining room. I would say what I love most about the home is because it is such a quaint space, um, and because there is two of us, I like that we designed it in a way that has a very like open floor plan. Um, we really, really like hosting. Uh, even though our apartment is smaller, um, we always love to have it feel with people. Um, and so being able to orient the furniture in a way that allows us to be able to do that. Um, I love how the dining room and the kitchen flow into the living room. Um, and so although we don't have like a lot of walls that like separate rooms and make them very defined, I feel like it feels a lot like us. Like mm -hmm. we like adventure. Um, we don't like to follow like a lot of rules. We kind of want to make up our own flow. Um, so I feel like our home is like a really good representation of that. Yes. Okay. I would say my favorite aspect of our home would be a room and it's probably the underdog, um, but it's our bedroom. So our bedroom, it feels like its own sort of oasis. It feels like a break from the entire design of the rest of our home. And honestly, like after a spa-like experience in our shower, our bathroom, and then transcending into our bedroom after like a long week or just like a self-care Sunday. I feel like that type of experience is just like um, really maximized by the design of our bedroom um, from the actual like bedding that we have um, to the drapes that are in the room and our armoire. It feels, oh, I mean also the shelves, the shelves at the top, mm -hmm. those are also beautiful. So yeah, it's probably my favorite room to watch TV in as well. I think it's yours too. Um, it, but it's not. My it favorite is, room to is, watch TV is, is out here with the it's surround sound. It's become his favorite. <laughs> He likes to watch it with me, and so he watches it in there. Right, because yeah. she likes to go to sleep early, but <laughs> I I personally like the surround sound. All right, so we are obviously going to talk about the elephant in the room, which was also our first concern when we saw the apartment, which was that there's no space in the kitchen for the mm -hmm. fridge, which is why it's sitting conveniently in the dining room. But that's okay. Um, because we love our kitchen as it is, and our kitchen has a beautiful story as well. It's perfect for two, so we get to be nice and cozy <laughs> at home when we're cooking uh, our favorite meals um, and we're sharing the space. So here in the kitchen, I guess we will start by talking about the tile. Um, so again, we're going to keep saying renter friendly folks because we rent, but this tile, um, this tile that we sourced off of Etsy, Etsy has been a great place for us to be able to find the bespoke, one-of-a-kind pieces. We really wanted um, a statement wall in the kitchen because we don't have natural light and we don't have a window. We wanted to bring some of those nice bright colors, bold colors into the space. 
to invite you in. Um, and so this tile we found in the Etsy shop and we just knew we had to have it. It's actually glass, but they're removable. And they remind us of our travels in Italy where we mm -hmm. went to celebrate my 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and it reminds us of Positano yes. and Capri, all the Am Amalfi, Coast. Amalfi Coast, all of those beautiful adventures. Um, so we love that. And then this picture um, by Carla R Rudd um, as well just makes us feel like it's daytime, even at night. What do I love in the kitchen? I would say our open cabinet here. Mm -hmm. So um, you can see it when you're standing here closer, but really what we did was we removed the cabinet doors from one of our, uh, the cabinet above our sink. And that was to expose the actual dishes that are within the cabinet. So we wanted to see inside, which was a way that felt like it, it made it a little bigger here. Um, and it's easier for us to grab our plates, but Dishware and um, cups and glasses are definitely like one of our lo love languages. I feel like we can't go into any store without like picking up a new set of plates, yeah. a new glass. Um, so we swap out our glasses depending on like the season or what we're going for. We've, we've gone through a, a several rounds of, revi of revisions where we're trying to figure out the best way to display everything. But right now we just added in our favorite black plates, some eggshell blue um, plates that have like irregular, I'll even show you have like irregular um, shapes and um, patterns throughout. So it just makes eating breakfast like that much better when you have like a really nice plate, like even if it's just eggs and bacon. So yeah, I like that. Yeah, so the art of plating we found is really, really important. And yeah, like Danielle said, it's just the other things that make such a small kitchen like really matter, which is like we have our little herb, occasionally we'll have a little herb garden going. Um, this one right now is mint. Um, and then, yeah, we have the other smalls that we have. We'll have, like, whatever cookbook at the time that we're really loving, uh, we'll have there. We got our knives display, and then, of course, we just have to have, like, our favorite hand soaps, mm -hmm. lotions, all of that, because your hands get really dry. And, yeah, and we love to just throw a nice little fresh flower moment. Like, aren't they so cute? <laughs> yeah. They're little bulbs. Yeah, we like it. Oh my God! Who's the chef in the Who's the chef in the house, babe? Oh my goodness! It's me. No, I'm just kidding. It's Curtis. Curtis is really the chef in the house. Honestly, whenever our friends come over, I'm like, Curtis is cooking, so they come with a even bigger appetite than they normally would. Um, but one of my favorite dishes that Curtis makes is oh, it's smothered chicken. I almost I was split between two, but it's smothered chicken with gravy. And honestly, when he first told me about it, I was like. Uh, it sounds a little like southern for me. I don't know. Brown um, gravy. It's brown we gravy. To, okay, yeah. With mushrooms and onions and chicken, and we usually make homemade mush, uh, mashed potatoes. He makes mashed potatoes. And she she enjoys them. So we've talked about the things that we love for entertaining. We talked about the places that fill our belly. What about where we lay our head? Let's go to my favorite room, the bedroom. If I had a tip for living in a small space and wanting to design it, um, it is to not view it as an obstacle, but as possibilities. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times we approach design almost as if it's not an equation to solve, but it is. Like every space, every room is its own equation, um, which means it comes with its own factors and reasoning, and you just have to keep that in mind um, and just usability, like your home has to be something that you have to be able to utilize and in a smaller space, that means that everything has to matter that you do and every decision has to make sense. So yeah, look for possibilities, not challenges. What would be my greatest tip for someone living in a small space? I would say to optimize organization. Um, and when I find the best tips, I just save them like on TikTok, like I have like a bunch of things saved. So I would say the container store is absolute favorite um, when you're trying to figure out um, best ways to solve for design um, organization. And um, maximizing those like small spaces, build up where you can, um, and also un utilize like under the bed storage. Um, lots of matching organization makes it feel a little bit nicer and cleaner. Um, so I would say, yeah, that would be my tip. All right, and we've made it. 
to where the magic happens. <laughs> That's the like O M T V Cribs line. You remember that? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> this is like our version of MTV Cribs right now. Okay, so this is our bedroom. Um, as Danielle said, it's her favorite place in the house. Um, and it is literally a breath of fresh air. Um, so the wall treatment that we have in here, this is Roman clay as well, um, as we talked about before, but instead this one is in the color Figueroa. Um, we're telling you the colors, don't go do your home in the same exact colors as us, but we love Figueroa and Roman clay. Um, and then this piece is the other piece that we talked about from Dico Washington, which is entitled Starboy which we just love. It is such a statement for us to like walk into and to be greeted with. And we often leave our door open so that other people um, who are coming can also see this as well. Um, so we kind of like treat our home like a little bit of like a art museum. Mm -hmm. We're keepers of art. Yeah, preservers. Preservers of the stories and the people. Babe, why don't you tell them about your gorgeous vanity? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Curtis says it that way because I wanted a vanity so bad. I do my makeup and if you know, you know. The girls that get it, get it. You need a big surface to do your makeup. And our bathroom is kind of small. So we were searching high and low for a vanity that didn't look like it was like cookie cutter, that still felt like it fit the vibe of our home. And we found this desk. So it's actually an antique from First Dibs and it's also from Mexico and um, it serves as our vanity also kind of like a bedside table and we partnered it with this little um, stool it's like an african stool that i can sit on it's a little lower to the ground but um, it feels kind of intimate and easy to get the job done so. so the wardrobe behind us when we thought about what are the colors and the textures of what we wanted we knew we needed additional uh, space as danielle mentioned before yes. Um, when you have a smaller space. And so we got this wardrobe that we liked the archway and how it kind of brought in the archway from the kitchen transition to the dining room. And how could we bring that into the home to kind of bring some harmony. We like also the rattan and the, the craning that's happening here. Um, and it just fit. It was like a perfect fit in between our his and her it just like all made sense so it is a little bit lighter um of a wood than we wanted we really like this rich um wood color so we have thought about staining it but overall shape and just convenience wise we love it so the mindset and inspiration behind this room was definitely for it to feel like an oasis. Sometimes it's compared to a Tulum or Scandinavian design, um, but we really just want it to feel like a break from the rest of our home. So when you step in here, it's soothing, it's a little bit more moody, um, and just kind of prepares you for the main purpose of the room, which is to rest. So we definitely want it to feel calm and soothing. It's given luxury hotel vibes, <laughs> but at home, 24 7 yes you know a little vacay vacay at home at home the bedding when i first got with danielle and she started telling me about how the girls were making their beds and all of that fellas i never knew beds were made like this um all of these like big pillows and the layering there's literally like one two three four five there's like seven pillows on this bed that's a lot of pillows but Presentation wise, I get it now. So when she says the girls who get it, get it, now the guys who get it, get it. And I love this. So I can't go back. This is like forever our presentation style. This um, lampshade cover we actually got again from Etsy. Again, like we said, we love an Etsy find. Um, this we just got because it again gave us that like tropical, like vacation vibe that we were looking for. The shelves above it um also are from etsy that we got custom for our space um we saw it in like travel inspo in morocco and we just knew that we wanted it and we have these pre-loved vessels that sit atop it that give us this really nice like balanced wasabi feel um that we really love and then down here we have our tartan um table slab um that we love for danielle to be able to put all of her nightly goodies on and then also we have this beautiful um uh lamp that we got from gantry um that is actually made from like sustainable material so you know we got to keep a little eco in the house and then my favorite thing the remote always sits on my side but right oh my now God. it's on danielle's side 
because as she said, I'm the TV person. So, yes, the room is also one of my favorite places to watch TV. But yeah, this is our bedroom and we love it. The word home means to me um, a feeling of somewhere that makes you feel safe, mm -hmm. somewhere that makes you feel like there's still so much more life ahead of you um, than behind you. And like a reminder of like the best parts and the best reasons of like why we live. You know, I think for me, this is, you know, a little bit more personal, but um, when I lost my mom to cancer in 2014, um, I really grappled with the idea of like what home meant. And I think that as I grew up and became an adult, I had to understand what that meant. And so now building a home with my wife and understanding that this has become our little safe place and our space of holding memories and the best parts of what life has given us. Um, I think that that's what home means to me. In all honesty, what home means to me is honestly where Curtis is. So I feel like I, we both kind of mirror in that way. Um, I think the reason that is is because we have grown like such a dynamic life together through university, through the pandemic and living here and then building a home together. So a lot of what we've learned and how we've grown up together um, lives in each other. Um, and also when I was growing up, so I grew up in the sub suburbs of Chicago, um, home was, you know, uh, this beautiful house. So like it kind of felt like the American dream in some ways. Um, but then we ended up losing our home during the pandemic and that piece of me was no longer there. It was more just memories, no place to return to. So instead of having home tied to a physical like building, um, I think having it tied to our partnership and like the places that we go feels more um, long term and uh, more, a little bit warmer. So yeah, I'd say that. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.